Welcome to What Saith the Scripture. I'm David Yap. Yeah. Today we're going to be looking at the Sefer. Now, I just purchased this and I'm excited because it is the latest version of the scriptures. Now, I used to be a King James Version only, only believer. And then recently, um, Elohim, what you would call God, um, revealed to me the hidden name that's been hidden throughout the centuries, and that is the yad heh vad -Hey sign. It's pronounced, uh, well, the name of, of God is, or the name of Elohim is Yah. Spelled Y-A-H, pronounced Y-A-H, Yah. And so you'll hear me pray, Ava Yah, and it's saying, Father God, but I'm calling him by his name. And so um, it's pretty interesting when you learn about this, because then you're going to have a very close relationship with your Abba Father when you know his name is Yah. So let's look at the Sefer together. And I don't know if it's pronounced Sefer or Sefer, but this is what I just purchased. I think it was like $21 on um, the Play Store. Now, here's the daily prayer. Let's, let's start out with that and see how it is. Hear now and do, Yisrael, Yahuwah, our Elohim. Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Eth Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all yourself. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Blessed are you, Adonai and Elohim, King of all time, for giving us Eth knowledge, Eth understanding, and Eth wisdom in the fear of Yahuwah. And you could say Yah as well. Now, Eth means divine. So when you see the Eth, that means divine. Like you would say holy, but it means divine. And then it's in Hebrew. And I don't speak Hebrew, so I'm not going to read that. <laughs> and so, so far, I really enjoy what I'm reading here. Let's learn together. Let's search, for example, and look up Sure Mercies of David. This is something the Lord put on my heart recently. Sure mercies. Of David. Okay. Now this is searching, I think it's 79 books of the Bible, not 66. It's got all the lost, well not, not all, but I mean I think it's got almost all of the lost or hidden books of the scripture. So this is a fascinating, uh, I believe the Lord, or I believe Yah has re preserved his word. For many years it was preserved through the King James. And now he's preserved it through this Eth Sefer. And so see if we're, you know, see if this is a blessing or not, because um, I don't know how to explain it other than I used to be a King James Version onlyist for like the last year or so. And I've been saved since 1998. 
Uh, the Lord had me change my name to David Christian back in the year after I got saved in 1998, December of 98. He had me change my name legally to David Christian in, I think it was May of the year 2000. And then recently, just like a couple days ago, when I understood that the word Christian and Jesus are actually have pagan roots that were created by the Roman Catholic Church. And, and you know, this sounds crazy to, to, to most people that are Christians, but uh, Abba Yah has revealed to me that in these end times, part of the strong delusion is Christianity. And the scripture says, come out from her, my people. Christianity was created by the Roman Catholic Church. So a lot of King James only us understand that uh, they know not to trust the Roman Catholic Church. Yet they're still in the system of Roman Catholicism with Christianity using pagan names for Elohim, like Lord, which means Baal, and Jesus Christ, which Jesus is not the name of our Messiah or Mashiach. His name was Yashu, Yeshua, Yashua, or Joshua. And so if my name is David and I go to another country, I'm not going to be like, hey, my name's David in, in America, but over here, translate it into your language and call me uh, Dawid. I'm going to say, my name's David, call me David. And that's the simple analogy for the name of our creator. So I encourage you to continue on this journey and learn more about your creator. Because it's beautiful when you start to follow the way of Yeshua. He said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to, cometh to the Father but by him. And so see if this isn't true, what's going on now in these end times. It's called the, the Hebrew Roots Awakening. We're awakening back to the Hebrew roots of our faith. We're not in religion. We're in relationship with our Creator. And uh, I have such a close relationship with Him. I'm able to call Him Daddy, Abba. And I know His name is Yah. So I can call my Creator Abba Yah. Not many people on this earth are able to do that. And it is a, a, it's a huge blessing. It's an honor. It's, it's, I can't even describe it, but I love my Abba Yah. Abba Yah, I love you. And I'm here to share with others that love, that grace, that mercy, and also his judgments and his laws. There's so much to this wonderful creator. You could never stop studying this. It's amazing. So here we go. Let's look at the sure mercies of David. And this is out of the book Isaiah, or Yasha Yahu. Notice how it's got the name Yah in there at the end, Yahu. But it's it, it really it could be pronounced Yasha Yah, not Yahu at the end. I'm going to start reading it the way that I know, even beyond what's written here. Look at Isaiah, the name Isaiah. Okay, you got the name Isaiah. And then it's pronounced Yasha, y Yasha Ya, Yasha Ya, Yasha Ya, or Yasha Ya. Yasha Ya. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but I know if you look closely at the Yahoo, it's really the name Ya is in there. And so I would, I'm going to read it, Yah, because I know his name is Yah, not Yahoo. It's simply Yah. Like, Alleluia. His name is in there. You're praising Yah whenever you say, Alleluia. And that's what we're going to be saying, Alleluia, in heaven. We're going to be praising his name, Yah. Find this out. On your, on your own if you don't understand or believe what I'm saying and see if the Holy Spirit in you agrees. 
Hallelujah. It has the creator's name in it. Yah. And so let's look at this. Yasha. Yasha Yah. Yasha Yah. It's praising the name Yah in the name Isaiah. And that's what you're going to find out through these studies is that the name Yah, my people who are called by my name, the name Yah is hidden in most of the names of the children of Yisrael. So that's how we know his name is Yah. But it's a, it's a huge revelation that you get in these end times and not everyone's going to get it. But um, many believe that it is the seal of, the name that is not known by any man. Many believe that that's the seal of Yah. And that that's the seal on the forehead that you want. <laughs> so let's learn this together now. Let's read. Yeshayah. Or Yeshayah. 55.3 for the sure mercies of David. Incline your ear. And come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will cut an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And then in the book of Acts, Ma Asim 1334. And as concerning that, he raised him up. From the dead. Now, no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Now, did you notice where he said, raised him up from the dead? To me, that is speaking of the rapture. And as concerning that, he raised him up from the dead. Now, no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. So that's beautiful. Now let's see what happens when we um, click on the button to the right to go to the... Um, this is my first time using this tool. Or this app even. Let's look, click to the right and see what it takes us to. Maybe the whole chapter. Oh, yeah. So it opens it up into... And then let's see. I'll move my little picture here. Or this little screen capture. Okay. Oh, great. That'll fit right there. Um, the way I'm going to do these videos, if I do any more, I'm just going to do it freestyle, kind of unscripted, and just let Abaya guide us. The spirit of his son, Yahshua, who lives in me, in my heart. And we'll learn together. And some of these tools, maybe, you know, you're going to want to use yourself. So that's why I talk about these tools that uh, are available. Like right now I'm using to record the screen. It's a, it's a great tool I just learned about. It's called DU Recorder. And... I'll take you there while we're talking about it. It's this one down here. DU Recorder. And then it's also got a DU Recorder editor that when you download the app from the Play Store for free or wherever you get it, DU Recorder. I don't even know what DU stands for, but it's the best recorder I've found. Um, it's a screen recorder and it, It'll capture screens too, screen capture. But um, let's go back to the Sefer. And the way we get back there is I can close out that and go back to here. Okay, here we go. Now this would be Yashaya 55. Let's read the whole thing and see what we get from the sure mercies of David. Oh, 
Everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will cut an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, you shall call a nation that you know not, and nations that knew not you shall run unto you because of Yahuwah Elohayaka or Yah. Well, let's just read it as it is. Yahuwah Elohayaka. Just remember the name Yah is in there. And for the Holy One of Yisrael, for He has glorified you. Seek ye Yahuwah while He may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto el Yahua, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our Elohim, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, say, says Yahua. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but waters eth the earth and makes it bring forth and bud Wow, remember that word F means divine. I see that's not in the King James. That's beautiful. The revelation there is, but waters divine the earth. Divine. Waters divine the earth, but waters eth the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish eth, divine, eth that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar or briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to Yahweh. It shall be to Yah. No, I'll say Yahuwah. But his name's Yah. And it shall be to Yah for a name. It shall be to Yahuwah for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Wow. So now let's go back to Acts 13.34, Ma'asim, and the sure mercies of David. Let's see that chapter. 
Okay, we get an idea of what we're looking at here. Okay, let's see. Remember, keep in mind, this is my first time I'm reading this, this version as well. And right now, it's been a huge blessing. And a lot of these words we might not understand right away, but you know what? Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask and it shall be answered. Or I don't know. I haven't memorized the scripture much, but it is hidden in my heart. And so I don't know a word for word a lot of times, but that's it's still hidden in my heart. And the Holy Spirit, or they say what the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the set apart spirit or the dedicated spirit big difference between set apart and dedicated set apart is kind of like oh you're just putting this off to the side here on the table but dedicated means you're committed to it it's more important to you than anything so do you see the power of the words and i'm seeing how how yah had used the King James Version for 400 years, preserved his word through that in the English language in 66 books. Notice the number six is the number of man. And you've got two sixes. So you're looking at there's God or Yah, Elohim, and there's man. And so you've got the 66 books that were preserved. And now, in these end times, he's got the eth, Sefer, which has, I think, 79 books. So you're looking at the number seven is God's number of completion or perfection, and nine is fruitfulness. So go figure that one out. Chew on that for a while. Digest that. Get a hold of that. And understand that part of the great deception is Christianity. And if you stay in the King James Version, you're going to miss out on huge blessings. Come out from her, my people, saith the Lord. Actually, the word Lord means Baal. So I got to train my mind not to keep using these. These are like blasphemous words that we've used. But God, or Yah, um, allowed it for a season. And when we weren't aware of it, it wasn't a sin for us. But now that we're aware of it, it's a sin. To use blasphemous words to describe a perfect and holy and righteous Elohim, Yah. So let's read this. Ma Isim Acts 13. Now, there were of the called out assembly that. See, look at that's the name. That's for the word church. This version doesn't use the word church because the word church is going to make you think, oh, the church is different than Israel. It's always been a called out assembly, even in the old covenant, which there wasn't an old covenant and a new Testament or an old Testament and a new Testament or an old covenant and a new covenant. It was an old covenant and a renewed covenant, renewed Big difference. Now, there were of the called out assembly. What we would call the church, which we stop using that word church. Look at these church buildings. Don't you know it's uh, run by Satan now? It's the, uh, uh, we're in the apostate age. We're in apostasy. We've let Satan overrun us. Wake up. Now there were of the called out assembly. Come out from her, my people. Are you part of his people? Do you want to come out from Mystery Babylon, the whore of Babylon, the Roman Catholic system, which includes the King James Bible? To me, that almost sounds blasphemous from what I used to believe, but think about it. Tell me if this word isn't speaking to you in a pure way. Now there were of the called out assembly that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnava and Shimon, 
That was called Niger or Nigger. See how Satan has taken a good name and blasphemed it? Niger. Niger. N nigger. I don't know. It's, I think it's pronounced Nigger. That was called Nigger. And Lucius of Cyrene. And Manain, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Shaal. That's for Paul. Paul's name is not Paul. It's Shaul. Shaul. Shaal. Shaal. I'm still learning myself. So. Shaal. That's Paul. Start talking. Let's call him by his real name. And Sha'al. As they ministered to Yah, uh, it says Yahuwah, but see, even this, it's been revealed that his name is Yah. We don't have to say Yahuwah. It's almost like too complicated to say Yahuwah. It's Yah. So I'm going to start saying Yah. And that's just my personal choice based on revelation. See how you got to let the Holy Spirit lead you. Not any man-made version of the scriptures. Um, yes, it can be inspired by the Holy Spirit, but there's oftentimes deeper revelation from the Holy Spirit that's for his children. And when he gives it to you, why would you say, no, I'm going to not trust the Holy Spirit. I'm going to demand that whatever... Uh, you know, man has done, I'm going to just trust in that more. I'm going to be led from faith to faith by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to try to remember to use the word Yah whenever I see Yahuwah. And so just understand that the reason is because of revelation by the Spirit himself. As they ministered to Yah and fasted, the Ruach HaKodesh, that's the Holy Spirit, the, de de the dedicated spirit, the Ruach, HaKadosh said, Separate me, Eth Barnava, and Eth Sha'al, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Ruach HaKadosh, departed unto Cilicia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of Yah in the synagogues of the Yahudim. You know what the Yahudim is. It's got the word Yah in there. And the Yahudim are the Jews. Jews, which are called by my name, the Yah. His name Yah is in there. Yah. My people who are called by my name, Yah. Hudim. Yah is in there. It's the one word that is throughout the many of the names in the scriptures that is in, like we were talking about, Isaiah. Yah, Shua, Yah. Um, it's just beautiful when you find out the name of... It's the hidden name has been hidden from man for so many years. Uh, but God, Yah, allowed it. And so, if you want to be blessed in these end times to have the revelation of his name, be blessed. Be Baruch. But if you don't want his blessings, then... You can stay in the pagan name of Jesus Christ if you want, but once you know the truth, why wouldn't you want to let the truth make you free? And they had also Yah, Chanan, or Yah, Yahuwah, Chanan, to their minister. And I don't know who that is. It might be John. I'm not sure. See, I'm still learning. Let's see if it lets us click on it. Yep, look at that. So, this is Yahoo 
Chanan. Ya. See, they got it pronounced ya. I think. Ya. But it's ya. Ya. Let's pronounce it ya. Yahu ka nan. Yahu kanan. Yahua favored. Yahu kanan, the name of eight Yisrael Elim. Yahu kanan. For, for this part here. Joanan. Yahu kanan. Yahua favored or Yah favored. Yahu Yahu Kanan, the name of eight Yisrael Ele, Eliam. Joanna. Joanna. Yahu Kanan. Yahua favored or Yah favored. Yahu Kanan, the name of eight Yisrael Eliam. Wow, okay. And so, by the way, that's another tool of the DU recorder is that underlining tool you can write on the screen. And also having this uh, video in the upper corner, you can move, the, you could move that, the video around if you want and things like that. Uh, now that I lost it, let's see if I can find it back again. Because I don't know. I guess I can go here, DU recorder and see if it lets me go into the tools camera there we go it's a great little tool there for teaching and for communicating really so we can speak the truth in love but if any man be ignorant let him be ignorant So now we just looked up Where did we look up? Why is this not letting me go? I'm gonna back out and see what happens. We'll go back to the sure mercies of David in Acts. Okay, and we read, we were over here, I forget where we were, maybe verse 5, yeah, and they also had Yahu Kanan to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Yahudi, whose name was Bar Yahushua. Bar means like not. Interesting how people drink at bars. Bar Yahshua, not Yahshua. Interesting. Wow. Which was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for F. Barnava and F. Shoal. Shoal. So that'd be like Barnabas and Paul, but let's call them by their real names. And this is saying F. Be like saint or divine. F. Barnava and Eth Sha'al, and desired to hear the word of Yah. The word of Yah. You could say the word of Yahuwah, but I'm going to say what Yah has revealed to me, the simplicity of his name. The word of Yah. But Elemis the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Sha'al, who also is called Paul, filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, set his eyes on him and said, O 
O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, you child of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to pervert the right ways of Yah? And now, behold, the hand of Yah is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Now, I want you to think about something here. There's the Matthew 6, 22 sign. Therefore, if thine eye be single, the, well, the eye is, I forget the Matthew 6, 22, what it says exactly, but the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Now, the revelation is, you know, on the one hand, it's to be single-mindedness. But there's a deeper revelation in these end times. And it's been hidden in plain sight all this time. And it has to do with the sun. So the scripture saying, not seeing the sun for a season. When you cover one eye and look at the sun outside, you will see the Matthew 6.22 sign hidden in the sun. Try it. Don't be afraid. Fear not. I've looked into the sun for 10 minutes straight and it doesn't blind you. We've been lied to. Watch my video on the Matthew 6.22 sign. And then try it and leave me your comments in the section below. No one else has done it yet. Uh, one brother has done it or tried it and he said uh, he, he was afraid to keep looking. So I would encourage you to just do that and be blessed. You're going to see just an amazing sign of Yah and his son, Yahshua. Yahshua. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. And isn't that what I'm doing right now to you, is leading you by the hand? Because you have, you have not been able to see the sun for a season. Not just the literal sun, hidden inside there, the sign, but the son of Yah, Yahshua. Even if you've been saved and reading the King James Bible, have you not been... Now humble yourself and think about this. Has it not been true that you have not been able to see the true son of Yah for a season and that I'm, see, um, I'm leading you by the hand right now? Glory to Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of Yah. Now when Sha'al and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphyla, and Yah Uchanan, departing from them, returned to Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim, that's Jerusalem. Yer but let's pronounce it the way it is. Yerushalayim. And when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Shabbat or Shabbat and sat down. And after the reading of the Torah, which means teaching, not law, it's teaching. After the reading of the Torah and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Sha'al stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel. See, now this is teaching some things here. One, I wasn't sure if it was godly to, because the scriptures talk about that evil men teach with their fingers. This is saying here that Sha'al 
who wasn't white, by the way. He was Hebrew. He was dark skin color. Study that out, and you're going to get revelation about God's chosen people, the Hebrews. The true children, the lost 12 lost tribes of Israel. Then Sha'al stood up and beckoning with his hand said, so now he's like using his hand. And so that's not unbiblical to use your hand when you speak. So this is speaking volumes to me. It's teaching me a lot of stuff here. Then Sha'al stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Yisrael and ye that fear Yah, give audience. Okay, so now we see the word Yah there, fear God. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to say what I see. I'm going to say Yahuwah when I see it. And then I'll say, but I'll know that the name Yah is in there. And really what's that saying when it's saying Yahuwah, I think it's saying that God, the self-existent one, or you remember, remember he said, I am that I am. I think it's saying when we see the tetragram, I forget the tetragrammaton, the yad Hey vad Hey, the four, there's four symbols. I don't know what they are, but it's like the four symbols of, of Yah. It's saying Yah, which is his name, the self-existent one, from what I understand. So, again, I'm, I'm only a man. I'm sinful. I'm flawed. And so don't just take what I say and believe me. Don't ever believe anything I say. Ask, ask Yah through the Holy Spirit if what I'm saying is true. And compare Scripture with Scripture. Be like a, a Berean and search the scriptures daily to find out if what I'm saying is true or what any man is saying is true. And so, then Shal stood up, oh, and ye that fear Yah, give audience. Yahuwah of this people, Yisrael, cho chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Mitzerim. And with a high arm brought he them out of it. So if we're not sure what Mitzrayim is, we go in like so. Egypt was called Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim. Upper and lower Egypt. Mizraim, Upper and lower Egypt. So now we know. It's like, wow, that's pretty cool. To understand that. Talking about Egypt, which is a picture of the world, which is currently being allowed to be controlled and under the authority and, and kingdomship or power of the prince and power of the air, the god of this world, Satan. Which God, Yah is allowing to, so then people can choose who they want to follow. They want to follow Yah or Satan. Yahshua or Satan. And that's how he allows us to separate ourselves from the wheat and the chaff, from the wheat and the tares, the good and the evil, light and darkness. So now, oh, this is good. So now we looked up that I got to see when I look something up, why it takes me there and then it cuts me off. I can't, like I'm trying to scroll back up, but it won't let me. So I'm going to go and see. Now we're on 20, line 24. I wonder if this, yeah, this video is going to have to stay there because it's the only spot for it. But let's look and see where we were because it took us and it allowed me only scroll back up to line 24 or verse 23. So let's see when I looked that up, what happened. I looked up, I think I looked up, Paul's talking and it was Egypt we looked up. Um, hmm. 
This ain't the one. We gotta go back. We are here. See? I make a lot of mistakes. Get used to it. <laughs> so, yeah, we looked up. Yeah. Okay, we, we looked up. It's, it was Egypt, the definition. Here it is, 17. Mitzrayim. Yeah. So when I looked it up, notice that when I looked up the name Mitzrayim, it locked me out and popped the screen up to here to where all I could scroll back up to is there. So that's kind of like a glitch in the app, but it's a glitch nonetheless that we can work around. And so let's continue with this. This is wonderful. I love the word of Yah. It's so wonderful, especially when we were led by the Ruk HaKadosh. He teaches us all things. I don't teach you anything. It's like it's gonna be Yah teaching you. And me at the same time. Pardon me. So now let's see. We'll read this line again. Yahuwah of this people, and again I'm gonna read the name Yahuwah when I see it. But just remember Yah is the name. It's it's inside the name of Yahuwah. And that's why you see it in other places. Yah. Yah. Yahuwah of this people, Yisrael, chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Mitzrayim, or Egypt, Mitzrayim. And with a high arm brought he them out of it. He's going to bring you out of Egypt too right now. And I'm talking about out of Egypt completely to include the King James Version. Believe it or not, come out from her, my people. Don't stay in the deception. It's foolish. I know it seems like, oh my gosh, this is heretical. No, it's not. Look at what's going on. It's like coming out from the old covenant into the renewed covenant. Look at the King James Version as like a current modern day old covenant. Look at this at Sefer as the renewed covenant. Get off of the black square and jump onto the white square. We used to think that the white square was the King James Version, that it was the only truth in the English language. But that in and of itself was a huge deception that most, most believers aren't going to come out of question is, if you don't come out of it, is that going to be good or bad for your salvation? I don't know. That's going to be between, be between you and Yah. I don't know if that would prevent one from being raptured. We'll find out, I guess, on September 23rd, 2017, at the last trump of the feasts in Yisrael. We'll see what happens. And again, if nothing happens, we're not date setting, but... I mean, this is a sign in the heavens that is uh, the date of that, September 23rd. Watch the videos on it and watch God Rose, God's Roadmap to the End. You know, I made it easy in the playlist of 12 disciples on my YouTube channel, What Say It, the Scripture. The playlist, playlist 12 disciples will have uh, the 12 videos of the uh, 12 disciples that I follow or that I recommend and follow. And you can drill into those websites, you know, once you watch the video on, say, God Road, God's Roadmap to the End, then you can subscribe to that channel and start watching all the videos that he has. And same thing with whatever disciples are up there. And so, and I'm not smart, you guys. I'm not that wise. I didn't come up with this idea of 12 disciples on my playlist. That was... Yah revealing wisdom to me because that's what Yeshua did when he was here on the earth. By the way, he's still here on the earth. He has come in the flesh. He is, the scriptures say, he who believes that Yahshua is come in the flesh. That's how you'll know that they believe that it's not a false spirit. Well, I'm letting you know that I believe that Yahshua, who you call Jesus, 
Yahshua, is come in the flesh. Meaning he lives in me right now. And he's going to be, and he lives in you if you're saved. So the spirit of truth, I speak it right now. And that's a witness to you that I'm not of Satan or Shatan. He's going to want to make you think that I am so then you don't get the blessings. And that's going to be up to you. But you're running out of time, I'll tell you that much. We all are, which is a good thing. Glory to God. Glory to Yah that we are running out of time finally. I'm done with this world. Oof. Okay, Yisrael. I'm looking up here. Try to be very open and honest with you. I'm looking for where we left off, Mitzrayim. Wow. This is so beautiful. And brought he them out of it. I'm reading that again because it's so important. This is talking about getting you guys out of Egypt. I'm already out. Okay? And so in some ways, this is like a typology of Moses. Trying to help get you, the chosen people, out of Egypt. Don't be stiff-necked and stubborn. You guys just... You can always go back to Egypt if you don't like this. I mean, think about it. Don't be afraid. If you don't, if this ain't of God or of Yah, then go back to the King James Bible if this ain't it. But see if this is it. Don't let Satan rob you of the truth, of the word of God, of the word of Yah. But again, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. And so... It's not a burden that I have to carry. If you choose not to follow the word of Yah. So, and with a high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years, that's judgment. 40 years. And about the time of 40 years, suffered he their manners in the wilderness. Oh, wow. Look at that. He put up with their manners in the wilderness. That's so symbolic and so true. That literally happened. And it's also spiritual truth for us today. For 40 years, the years of judgment, even believers and chosen people are suffering. Yah is suffering their manners in the wilderness where they're lost still. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, that's Canaan, Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And that would mean they drew sticks and said, hey, this is for you. This is, you know, and, and that would be Yah's way of choosing who gets what is through lot which is drawing sticks, is what we would call it. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Shemuel, the prophet, Samuel. But again, Samuel isn't his name. It's Shemuel. Let's call him by his name. Shemuel, the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king. And Yah gave unto them Eth Sha'al, the son of Kish. And we know how that worked out. You want a king over you? Look at what happened with Sha'al. But see, look at what's going on here. It's showing us how Yah gave a physical king, Sha'al. Now he's given us a spiritual king or leader through Yeshua and through Paul or Sha'al. Isn't that beautiful? I never really thought about that until now. <laughs> See how the Ruach HaKadosh is teaching us together, both you and I? And notice how I never got that from the King James Version. I'm getting it here now in the Eth Sefer, the divine book. The son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Binyamin, Bini, or Binyamin. And so... Benjamin, Benjamin, wow, 
this is amazing where we can study and keep learning so much. Benjamin, Binyamin, son of my right hand. Wow, look at that. Seated at the right hand of God, of Yah. Son of my right hand, Binyamin, youngest son of Yaakov, Jacob. But again, Jacob's not his name. There is no J. It's Yah, Akov. And look, the name Yah is in there through the pronunciation. But the name Yah, Y-A-H, Yah, Akov. See how Satan has hid the name of God by having us call their name Jacob? You'd never know that it's Yah, but now you do. Yah, Akov. Also the tribe descended from him and its territory. And the, the, what is the tribe that descended from descended from Yaakov? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yaakov turned into Israel. So this is Israel, you guys. Benjamite. Sometimes with the article inserted, Ben Ha Ya Minyati. Ben Ha Ya Inim or Ini, which has got Ya in there. Yah. See, it's even hidden in this version. You got to see the word, the name Yah throughout. Shemuel Rishon 9 1. Bin Ishi Yamin Yai. Bin Ish Yam Ini. Son of a man of Yah Min. Or shorten Shemuel Rishon 9 4. Ector 2 5. Esther Ector. Ish Yaminin, Ish Yamini, a man of Yamini or Shemuel El Rishan, twenty one, simply Yamini, a Yamini, plural Beni Yamini, a Benin Yamini or descendant of Bin Yaminin. Now, you could say, well, this is too complicated. Well, you know what? Then if you don't like going and seeking, you're not going to get blessings from yeah if you don't like see here's the thing there is unclean and clean animals the clean animals do both of these things they divide the hoof and they chew the cud so divide the hoof is to rightly divide the word of yah and the chew the cud is like a cow would chew, chew grass, swallow it. So we chew on the word of Yah. We swallow it and then we spit it back up and chew it some more. Swallow it again. Chewing the cud. And we're dividing the hoof and chewing the cub. So cud. So you'll know that you're a clean man if you do both. Divide the hoof, or rightly divide the word of Yah. And in these end times, that would be to rightly divide and say, look, the whole King James Bible, I'm going to rightly divide out of, come out from her, my people. Rightly dividing the word of God, or the word of Yah, or the word of truth. I'm telling you, check it out. You rightly divide away from that whole system. And watch how freeing it is when you have the real, purified, renewed covenant. Rightly divide the word of truth. There's a lot of scripture that you have memorized through the King James Version. And it's biblical. It's accurate. But there's just a lot of problems with the names. The name Lord Jesus Christ is not even, that's not his name. I mean, once you know his name, wouldn't you want to call him by his name? Yahshua? You start calling me some other name, I'd be like, my name's David. Learn how to pronounce my name's David. Well, but where I'm from, we call you Dawood. Be like, no, I don't want you calling me Dawood. You all deceived to call me Dawood. I'm David. Now, let's continue. We could talk about that forever. But just uh, pray on it, pray on it. And if you're not clean... The scripture says, he who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is unholy, let him be unholy still. And so, in some ways, it's like, 
leave, go. If you're not of, if you're not of Yah, then get out. <laughs> See the movie come out? I didn't watch it, but it's called Get Out. If you're not of Yah, then get out. We don't want you here. If you're of Satan, go go back to his system. And then, yeah, we're going to laugh and mock you in a way because that's what the Lord says. I mean, Yah says he's going to hold them in derision. He's going to mock them as, you know, they are getting destroyed. So, but I'm not going to get too much into that because then it becomes ungodly or unbiblical to mock too much. Um, but sometimes you're supposed to, you know, like a, a slap in the face. It's supposed to be a spiritual slap in the face. And if, wow, if you get slapped in the face, you're supposed to turn the other cheek. Not run away. Not fight. So if I'm giving you a spiritual slap in the face, if you're of Yah, you're supposed to be like, okay, I'll turn the other cheek and I'll, I'll keep listening. Now, you tell me that's not from, from Yah, that teaching right there. I didn't come up with that. The Holy Spirit just told me to say that. So, I'm not that wise. It's not me. So, let's continue. I'm going to have to figure out a way to keep my space better. Okay, so now, oh, because when we, oh, got to remember when we look something up, it pops us out. We got to remember where we were when we do that. So let's go back here and then let's try to remember, well, not let's, let, I'm going to try, it's just me doing this, but I'm saying let's like you're here. <laughs> so let's try to remember, <laughs> I'll try to remember to do that, but I'll remind us to we were here, by the way, I'm clicking a little tool in the bottom, if you notice, that allows me to underline things, and then I have to click it off if I want to move the screen, because like, look, if I try to move the screen now with the, the tool on, by the way, it's a touch screen, so like I try to move it and it just, it doesn't. So now you can back up and say, well, I'm deleting each line, but you have to click off of it to get out of it so you can scroll. And it makes sense, otherwise, you know, the tool, it has to be active or not. But once the tool's active to write with, it freezes the screen, and you won't be able to scroll with it. I'm trying to oh, see if I can get the letters bigger or not by doing, you know, like a fingers, two fingers squeezing and tightening, and it doesn't. And so I'm still learning this with you as I go. But now let's continue. This is fun. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah, and I'm going to try not to look up so many things this time. We'll just keep reading through and see, let the Holy Spirit teach us. So we're looking and said, oh, full of all subtlety, right? And he sat down, taught, Paul, Shaw all stood up. In 40 years in the wilderness, suffered in their manners in the wilderness. And I'm going to, I'm going to have the tool on for underlining. Now, here we go. And when he had destroyed seven nations, remember, seven is a number of completion, God's number of like perfection. Completion, seven days in the week. So look, he's talking about complete destruction. This is symbolic of, you know, it's literally happened. But the spiritual truth is that God is going to do complete, perfect destruction of all the nations. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, Canaan he divided their land to them by lot. So he's going to divide the land to us by lot later. His chosen people. After he destroys all the nations with perfect destruction. 
And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Shemuel the prophet. Wow. And afterward, they desired a king. And Yah gave unto them Eth Sha'al, the son of Kish. Now notice it says Eth Sha'al. That means divine, Sha'al. So even though he became an evil king, he was divine, divinely appointed, the evil. Just like Satan is divinely appointed on this fallen world right now. He is divinely appointed by Yah. So Sha'al is a, a typology or a picture of Satan being sent by Yah to judge And curse, really. The son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Binyamin, by the space of 40 years. Look at that judgment, 40. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David. Now look at that. Now he's giving them a godly king. Who was sinful also, though. He still sinned. But we're talking about what now? The mercies of David. The sure mercies of David. And look what my name is, David. The Lord's using me to share with you the sure mercies of David. He's raising up unto you another David. Not to be your king, but to kind of, in a spiritual way, rule over you, but not lord it over you, but to guide you and to teach you the truth. To whom also he gave testimony. You tell me if that uh, Matthew 6.22 sign isn't a testimony. And when you read my testimony in this, uh, the fact that the Lord changed, uh, Yahoo changed, Yah changed my name twice. Old covenant. Renewed covenant. When he had my name, David Christian, I was still in the system of Satan, not knowing it. My name was Christian. That's not of Yah. That's of the Roman Catholic Church. So Yah brought me out of that. And I'm sharing this with you. You can take it or leave it. And said, I have found David, the son of Yeshai, a man after my, my own heart which shall fulfill all my will. Whoa. That's speaking to me right there, saying that, you know, I'm in the Lord's will, or I'm not in the Lord's will. That's Baal, by the way. The Lord is Baal. Why do you think uh, humans, which the word hue is a, is a satanic pagan god, hue, man. Why do you think hue, man, takes on the name Lord in front of their names? I used to think, oh, it's because they wanted to be like God, you know, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh-uh. It's because they're saying their name is Baal, Lord. Study this out. You'll see what I'm saying is true. Got to break the uh, witchcraft that's been put on us, even through the word of God. Remember, it says here that Yah gave unto them. A cursing. They thought it was good. Just like the King James Version. Hey. They thought it was it. But not. Four years. Judgment. Come out from her my people. I'm speaking the truth in love. This is not something I'm making up. I don't have some grandmaster plan to get you away from God. Well. Actually God is not his name. I'm trying to get you away from God, yeah, to Yah, the true and living Yah. When he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, which shall fulfill all my will. And I am a man after Yah's own heart. That's why Yah has blessed me. And David means beloved, by the way. So my name now, David Yah means beloved of Yah. What a name to have, too. Beloved of Yah. I'm trying to write with this thing. It's not working too good. Beloved of Yah. 
glory to you and actually hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> the joy of the lord is my strength hallelujah to fulfill all my will what a high calling huh i'd like to go faster but i really can't 23 down to 52. There's so much here. We got to chew the cud. We can't just rush through this. That's foolish. Of this man's seed has Yahuwah, according to his promise, raised unto Yisrael a savior, Yahushua. Yahshua. Yahshua means Yah is salvation. And how are you going to get that out of the King James Bible with the name Jesus? You're not going to know that Yah is salvation. The letter J is not even part of the Hebrew, Aramaic Hebrew. So, you know, it's not his name pronounced that way at all. When Yah, Yahu Kanan, had first preached before his coming the immersion of repentance to all people of Israel. I'm looking at John. But again, John is not his name. It's Yah Kanan. There's the name Yah in John's name. How are you going to get Yah out of John? You're not. But in this version, you see Yah. The hidden name of Yah. The unspeakable name, which we're supposed to be speaking. Yah has hidden it all these years, and he's he's having it come out in these end times. And you got about 90 days left or so, so I would suggest uh, drawing close to Yah. And as Yahu Kanan filled, fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there comes one after me, whose shoes of his feet... I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Araham, Araham. I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's see. Uh, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to share with you how I'm doing this, and then you can remember too. I'm going to remember line 26, Avrahim, and we're going to look that up at this Abraham. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Avraham. And then we look it up like this. But we remember 26, Avraham. Now see what happened to the screen in the background? Line 26 jumped up. It's gone now. So not the greatest app for keeping your space. But let's see what Avraham, Abraham. Avraham. Avraham. Uh, Avraham. Avraham. Father of a multitude, Avraham. The later name of Avram, because his name was Avram first, and then it's Avraham. Abraham turned to Abraham. But again, Avram turned to Avraham. Wow, there's a lot of wisdom that's going to be coming out of these names. The proper pronunciation. Father of a multitude. Ooh. Isn't that Yah is a father of a multitude? Wow. Now notice his name Yah is not in there. But that doesn't discount what we've already learned about how Yah is hidden in all these now. Now we remembered number 26, so we can easily scroll back up to it. So that works out good. We just got to mentally make a note of the number we're on. And whosoever among you fears Yahuwah. Do you fear Yahuwah? Do you fear Yah? Or do you think, oh, Yah, this sounds stupid. I'm not afraid of this. Or I don't fear. I don't respect Yah. To you is the word of this Yahshua sent. 
So among you, this is like, this is separating the wheat from the tares. Whosoever among you fears Yahuwah, to you is the word of this Yahshua sent. If you don't have respect or fear of the Lord, actually fear of Yah, if you don't have fear of Yah, this word is not for you. Because the fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. You really don't have it yet unless you got fear of Yah. It's amazing. Sure, you had typologies of this fear of the Lord. And yes, you had fear of God. But once you know that God is not his name, and you know that Yah is his name, I would fear Yah. For they that dwell at Yerushalayim and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets. That would be me. I'm one of those prophets. Speaking forth the word of truth. Speaking forth the prophecies through the word. Which are read every Shabbat. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. Condemning Yahshua. They fulfilled the scripture when they condemned him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree. Notice that it's not a cross. The cross is also a major deception. It was just a tree. So picture his arms and his feet, one spike through the hands or through the wrists, one spike through the feet. So we're looking at two spikes, not three. So in some ways, there's more truth in the do to two-ness of God versus the Trinity. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we know there's God the Father or Yah the Father, Abba Yah, and then there is God the Son or Yah Shua, and both are in one. There's the physical body of the it says the Godhead bodily is in Christ in the King James. But again, the word Christ, that's not of Yah, that's of Satan, to be Christ and Christos and all that. That's Christianity, you guys, get out of it. So you got this physical body of Yah, of Yahshua, and inside the Son is the Father, the soul of Yah inside the body and then also the Holy Spirit's inside but the Holy Spirit is sent to us Yah sent the spirit of his son into our hearts he is the Holy Spirit so do you see how this doctrine of the Trinity which in many ways is true and when you involve the Holy Spirit but there's a deeper truth to understand that it's God the Son seated on the throne at the right hand of Yah, but inside of the Son is the Father, you guys. The soul of the Son is the Father. He's both. He is one. And the Holy Spirit's in him also, the Comforter. He sends it, the Comforter, to us. And so we have the Spirit of his Son. Yah sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts. He is the Raha Kadesh. Raha Akadesh. I don't know how to pronounce it yet, but I'm learning. He's the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of truth in this. And now that that's that pole, that's the that's the when you look in with one eye and you look into the sun. I'm gonna show you over here. 
When you look into the sun, if thine eye be single and you look at the sun with one eye, which remember, the Illuminati have been hiding in plain sight this understanding. They mock us with this one eye symbolism. They do like this on their covers and different things. It's one eye. They'll have hair covering their eye. One eye. I would imagine the majority of them don't know that they can look into the sun with that one eye. I think that they're just programmed by Satan to always be doing the one eye symbolism, thinking that they're like, aha, we're cool and we're you know evil and all. Or we know something you don't. But I'll bet that most of them don't even know, as followers of Satan, that they can take this and look up into the sun and get revelation of Yahshua. And you will see that the sun will start to gloriously brightly shine like this. And over here, you'll see this light beam start to come down like this. It's, it's beautiful. It goes about halfway down to the flat plane. And so what you're seeing is that this, and then, by the way, this look long enough, this will start to flicker into like a heart right here. It'll flicker to like a red heart. And so I used to think I saw a cross because of these. But in reality, it's a pole. Which, by the way, in the Old Covenant, Moses lifted up a pole with the brazen serpent on it. The brazen serpent is a brass serpent, which is dark colored. And the serpent represents sin. And, Jesus, and Yahshua became sin for us. And he is dark skin colored. He's a black man, folks. Hidden from us. Whited out by Satan throughout history. So you'll see this bright shining. And these rays kind of curve like this. And you'll start looking and be like, wait a minute. These curves that they're curving on means that there's a dome up there. It's not, I mean, there's like a dome. Just like you see the rainbow. And it's a rainbow. This is, this is reflecting off the dome, the firmament. And then also you'll notice that the curves, when they come to your eyes, it's partly because of your eye that you're looking through. And you look through the eye, it's going to be reflecting onto your the dome of your eye which your eye is symbolic of the shape of the the creation of the earth look at that your eye there's going to be land masses and the ice wall around it there's so much to this you could go on forever about it and it's just you don't have much time to keep going on about all these other things though stay in the word let the Ruha HaKadosh guide you and come out from her, my people. Or not. It's up to you. If you're not of his people, of Yah's people, then don't come out from her. Stay in there. Because it says here, to you, among you, and whosoever among you fears Yahuwah, to you is the word of this Yahshua sent. Not to others. And they fulfilled in condemning him, and they, and though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. When they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. Now you know it says when he was laid in that sepulcher that it was by a garden. The stone was by a garden. <laughs> you think maybe physically that was near the original garden? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe. Where Adam and Eve lived in the garden of Eden? <laughs> maybe the Lord... Well, maybe Yahshua, Yah, Elohim, was literally buried in the Garden of Eden. Wow. And then, 
Mary Miriam goes, Mary Miriam goes and sees a person who she thought was the gardener. Who was the original gardener of the Garden of Eden before Adam and Eve? It would be Yahshua, the gardener. Wow. You guys, are you getting this? Or is this just me getting this revelation? I mean, this is incredible. No one's teaching me this. No pastors are teaching me this. If you're not getting confirmation by the spirit of Yah through this, I can't help you. I can't help you. It's got to be the Lord. It's got to be Yah giving this to you. Whew. But Yahuwah raised him from the dead. <laughs> and he was seen many days of them which came up from up with him from Galil, Galilee, to Yashuralim, Jerusalem. Galil to Yashuralim, pardon me if I can do Yerushalayim, who are his witnesses unto the people. Wow. We are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you good news, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, Yahuwah, has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Yahshua again in us, you guys. He's raised him up again in us. As it is also written in the second Mizmor, you are my son. This day have I begotten you. That's what happens when we get born again. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now, no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Forgiveness of sin. It's sure. When you put your faith and trust and belief in the blood atonement, the sacrifice, the blood atonement that washes away your sins of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, from Sha'al, Paul, Sha'al. How that Christ, or Yahshua, the Messiah, how that Messiah died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose, uh, well, see, it's actually, you got to remember the words according to the scripture. How that Messiah died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Now, do you have the scripture or do you have a satanic version of the scripture that you think is the truth, that is a partial truth, sprinkled with lies? Come out from her, my people, and come to the Rightly divided word of truth. I love this. What Yah's doing. He's, his ways are not our ways. He's way above us, you guys. His thoughts are not our thoughts. It's not as simple as, oh, I've got 66 books that was put together by the Roman Catholic system and I trust it. What? Are you kidding me? Whoa. Uh, uh, yeah, Yah worked through it. But he's fulfilling his covenant now even more. Come out from her, my people. Because we declare unto you good news, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, Yahuwah has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Yahshua again. As it is also written in the second Mizmor, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. I'm David. I'm giving you sure mercies. And it's not me giving it to you. It's Yah. Wherefore, he says also in another Mizmor. 
And we could look that up if you want. But for now, let's keep going. You shall not suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Yahshua didn't see corruption, and those that are going to be raptured will not see corruption either. We will not taste death. For David, after he had served his own nation by the will of Yah, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom Yahuwah raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the Torah of Moshe, the teaching of Moses, the Torah of Moshe. We couldn't be justified by it. Doesn't mean we're not to walk in it, though, now. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of, of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work in a work. Look at this. For I work a work in your days. You tell me this is not a work he's doing. I, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no, way, no wise believe. You're not going to believe that you got to come out from the King James Bible. You're not going to believe it. Though a man declare it unto you. It's right there. And when the Yahudim, the Jews, you got Yah right in there, but not in the King James. You're not going to know Yah. And when the Yahudim were gone out of the synagogue, the synagogue of Satan, you guys, now, they say that they are Jews, but they are not of Jews. They are of the synagogue of Satan. The other people besought that these words might be preached to them the next Shabbat. Now, when the synagogue was broken up, many of the Yahudim and devout proselytes followed Sha'al. Hey, we're devout proselytes. We're following Sha'al and Barnava, Barnabas, Barnava, who, speaking to them, Persuaded them to continue in the grace of Yahuwah. I'm, I'm persuading you to continue in the grace of Yahuwah. And the next Shabbat came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Yahuwah. Wow, wouldn't that be amazing if that happened through YouTube? Through YaTube. <laughs> But many are called, but few are chosen. Remember, there were 26,000 warriors whittled down to the only 300 by Yah in the Old Covenant. But when the Yahudim saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken by Sha'al. contradicting and blaspheming. So you know what? You're going to have King James Bible-believing, so-called born-again Christians that are going to speak against those things that were spoken by Sha'al. They're going to say, I'm, I'm with Paul. And they're going to speak against those things spoken by his real name, Sha'al. Contradicting and blaspheming. Then Sha'al and Barnava waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of Yahuwah should first have been spoken to you. Through the King James, that was necessary. But seeing ye put it from you, this word, the renewed covenant, the fulfilled word, he's preserved it through this, et sefer. And judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Whoa. Lo, we turn to the other people. For so has Yah commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light of the other people, that you should be for Yahshua unto the ends of the earth. Wow. And we would say the other people would be the Gentiles, but look, 
It's not what the word of Yah says. It says this. For so has Yah commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light of the other people, that you should be for Yahshua unto the ends of the earth. That's where I take my stance. I side with Yahshua, Yah, not Jesus Christ anymore. Now that I know the truth, I have to come out from her. Question is, will you? And when the other people heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of Yahuwah. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. The strong delusion, you may not have eternal life in that. We'll find out. I don't know. And the word of Yahuwah was published throughout all the region. Look at that. The Et Sefer is being published throughout all the region right now. But the Yahudim stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Saul and Barnava and expelled them out of their coasts. So you're going to have Bible-believing King James onlyists that are going to stir up devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Sha'al. So look at that, how ironic. The ones that are going to be preaching Paul are going to be preaching against Sha'al. Wow. How many pastors do you think are going to be like, hey, I've spent 30 years teaching the King James Version, and now I'm going to change it. Their pride is going to get in the way most of the time. I'm thinking that, maybe. And Barnava and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. You know what? We were created out of the dust of the earth. And I never saw that until now. You tell me I'm not getting revelation out of this Et Sefer. Are you? I am. And it's not me teaching. It's the Raha HaKadosh. The Raha HaKadosh. The Holy Spirit. The dedicated spirit. And the Talmudim were filled with joy and with the Ruach HaKadash. Now look at this word Talmudim. The evil Satanists have the Talmud, which blaspheme our Yahshua. Or does it? I don't know, because now I'm starting to realize the Talmud talks against Jesus Christ, which is the false god of Baal. Lord is Baal, and Jesus is Caesarea Borgi, uh, the homosexual lover of Michelangelo. So maybe that's some truth in there. I don't know. But... Um, if they're talking about Yahshua, then it's satanic. So, again, some truths, lots of lies. Or some truths, some lies. But I want pure truth. I have the Et Sefer now. I have the fulfilled, completed. He's preserved his word until the end times. This is prophecy being fulfilled through the Et Sefer. Not through the King James. It doesn't have all the books of the word in there. And it was partially used, though, for a season. Remember we read. And the Talmudim were filled with joy and with the Ruach HaKadosh. Let's look up Talmudim and then close. What are the Talmudim? The disciples. The Talmudim are the disciples. If ye... Continue in my word, then ye are truly my disciples. Then ye are my disciples indeed. Then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Talmudim, those who are instructed, accustomed, disciples, learned, taught, used. Let's close. What a humbling thing to be used by Yah.
Wow. Okay. Let's pray. Abaya, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abaya. Thank you for your word through the Ed Sefer. Now we can learn more about the truth. And so we close with Abaya, what saith the scripture? Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according to his work. I love you. I'm here to share with you what Yah has revealed to me. And I pray that Abba Yah would use the Et Sefer to teach us his truth for Yah's glory. Hallelujah!